Hello, in this video I'll be introducing you to displacement time graphs and velocity time graphs. Here is a displacement time graph. This first section of the graph sees a, sees a steady, quite steep increase in displacement as time progresses. There's then a section here where the displacement doesn't change, and then a section here where the displacement does change but at a slightly lower gradient than previously. So what does this mean in the real world? Well, this represents travelling at a constant speed because you can see the displacement is constantly increasing. At this section here, the object is not moving at all because its displacement is not changing over time. And in this section here, the displacement is changing, but more slowly than previously. So it is travelling at a lower velocity. Velocity is defined as the rate of change of displacement. So the change in displacement divided by the change in time. On this graph, the change in displacement is along the y-axis and the change in time is along the x-axis. So we can draw a triangle along this line where this is our change in displacement and this is our change in time. By dividing this quantity here by this quantity here, this will give us the gradient of this line and therefore the velocity. And now onto velocity time graphs. You can see on this graph that the object starts off at rest, it's not moving at all, and then its velocity rapidly increases up to this point here. It is accelerating in this section. During this flat section here, its velocity is not changing. This means that the object is moving, but it is moving at a constant speed. And then here, it's accelerating again. Its velocity is again increasing. And then very suddenly, it stops accelerating and starts to slow down. Its velocity is decreasing until this point here. There are two things we can learn from a velocity time graph. The first is we can find the gradient of any section of this graph. Let's choose this area here. Once again, we find the gradient by drawing a triangle along the line, dividing the change in velocity by the change in time. Now, an equation you should know is that the change in velocity divided by the change in time is equal to acceleration. So the gradient measured from our velocity time graph is the acceleration. You can see on the graph that this section has a much steeper gradient, therefore there will be a much higher acceleration here. The acceleration here is zero because the gradient is zero. The acceleration here is negative because the gradient would come out as negative. A negative acceleration is what we call sometimes a deceleration. The second thing we can learn from a velocity time graph is done by measuring the area underneath the graph. If this graph was a straight line, we would have a rectangle here whose area would be the velocity multiplied by the time. So therefore, the area underneath the graph is equal to vt. Now we know that velocity is equal to displacement divided by time. So to rearrange this, we can find s equals vt. So this means that our area under the graph is equal to s, the displacement. So the area equals displacement. So in a distance time graph, the gradient is the velocity. In a velocity time graph, the gradient is the acceleration and the area is the displacement.